the most gracious, the most merciful. I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind. From the evil of the whisperer, who whispers evil in the hearts of men. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Yahya Ibrahim with another edition of Life Lessons from the Quran. A study of Surah Taha and the life of Musa alayhi salam. We've been discussing the debate between Fir'aun and Musa. And Musa, you know, has just exposed Fir'aun as being just a mere mortal, a human being who will live and die. Now, it's significant to know that Musa begins to give evidence of this. And Musa says that Allah says to me to say to you, Ya Fir'aun, that it is Allah who created the earth and has spread it out. It's Allah who has set paths in it and paths of life in it. It's Allah who brings down the rain from the heavens and allows all of this vegetation to grow. All of that is a sign. لَآيَاتٍ are multiple signs. لِأُولِ nuha to those who have a conscious, intelligent thought. Nuha. We need to pause with that word. You know, believing in Allah is the height of intelligence. And you know, we live in a world today, in our modern world, where there's a lot of people who, because they believe in science, they believe that it must somehow debunk Allah, that there is no Allah. A'udhu Billah. And there's this, you know, neo-atheism that has crept into a lot of the modern discourse. And it's almost as if, you know, in certain places, that if you're a person who's a believer, that there is a design to the world, there is, it's not out of chaos, it's not just out of randomness and nothing, that somehow you're intellectually deficient. When in fact, the height of intelligence is to recognize that you are not the center of all things. It's to have the humility to understand that the earth is nothing more than a speck in the vastness of the creation of Allah. And that those who live on it live with a purpose to honor the one who has placed them there. Not just to fulfill the vanities and desires that they have. To live a clean life that will continue into the next life. To know that it's not just about nothing, but that there is something more than the 60 to 80 years that we spend on this earth. لِأُولِ nuha To those who think clearly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to think clearly. Belief in Allah is not meant to just be blind. We are not people who just submit blindly. We are people who look for signs. And look, even Fir'aun is given signs by Allah. In his time and in his era, those are signs that are enough. But in our time, and you can see it as an extension of the Qur'an, that the Qur'an, when it was sent to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu it spoke about signs that weren't understood by those who he lived with. The Prophet Sallallahu there are statements in the Qur'an that lend credibility to some of the things that we see in science today in a way that were not understood in that greater, more holistic, more comprehensive capacity. One of the greatest evidences is in the beginning verses of Revelation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Iqra. Read, recite, learn, share with others. Iqra means verbalize it out loud. It's not just for you, O Muhammad. Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq. In the name of the Lord who has created all things. That's the beginning, and that's what was said to Musa. It's Allah who created everything, shaped everything in the way that He wanted. He created mankind from alaq. Now, at the time of the Arab, that word wasn't clear. From a language perspective, alaq can only be three things something hanging, or a leech or a clot, a blood clot. But for the Arab, that doesn't make sense. Mankind was created from something hanging, that's a leech, 
and something that's coagulated? What does that mean? It's something that, you know, it wasn't something that would be clearly understood. And at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, you know, some of those terms that were used, they were understood in the ability for them to understand it. And you can see when the Prophet would talk to them Wasallam, he would speak to them in a way about things that he could see into the future, but put it in a context that they can understand. The Sahaba, they don't clearly understand, and they would ask, you know, greater questions. They would say, well, you know, give us more. But the clarity of it in their pre-modern construct didn't give that, couldn't be explained in better words. The Prophet, you know, he would describe things that they would move later quicker than the clouds. Really, people, you know, things would be in the air. And there you see, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Liuli nuha. Now today, out of medical science, it's very easy. When you say alaq, you know, the little embryo, it looks like a leech. When you look at it under an electron scanning microscope, it looks like a chewed up clump. It looks like a leech. It looks like a coagulation. And it's hanging from the uterine wall of a woman. You know, all three definitions that are found for that word, fit what we in today, our modern science, come to understand about the words of Allah. But that was the first revelation given to the Prophet. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقَ اقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمْ Continue to read and you will see your Lord will be even more generous. That you will begin to understand, you and I, the more we study the Qur'an, not just the Prophet ﷺ, there will be more generosity and more opening and more understanding of the word of Allah according to the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So that's what's shared with Fir'aun. Look and reflect and understand what is happening around you. And it is not just for you, O Fir'aun, but anyone who can think, li'uli nuha, who has an intellect and a thought that they can ponder. Minha khalaqnakum. Look at how Allah ends this discussion. From the earth you were created. Wa fiha nu'idukum. And from the earth you shall be returned. وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى And from this earth you will be brought out one more time. Allahu Akbar. You know, that verse, it's a powerful verse. Verse number 55 of Surah Taha. From the earth you were created. Do you know what that means? That the difference between myself and the wood that I'm seated on, the wood of this table, is very little. The difference between the natural earth, the elements of the earth, and what my body is made up of, my organic body is made up, is very, very much the same. In me is 70% H2O, two hydrogens and oxygen, water. When you look at the ocean, 70% of you is that. When you look at a tree and its organic nature, when you see the animals and other things around you, genetically speaking, between you and a gorilla is not even a percent of difference in your genes. We are 99% genetically compatible with many of those animals. The first time human beings began to operate and fix faulty valves in the human heart, they would take the valve out of the swine, the pig, and they would put it in a human heart to fix it. Because your body, with a little bit of medicine, it won't reject it. It would recognize it as if it is genetically a part of it. Minha khalaqnakum. You're a part of this earth. You are made of sulfur and hydrogen. You are made of, you know, carbon. You are made of all of those elements. And that's why the food you eat replenishes those elements. You need magnesium and calcium for your bones. You need iron in your diet, right? Because you're made of this earth. That was something at that time they never understood. They didn't know it. Not at the time of Musa and not at the time of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah says it to us in the Quran. From the earth you were brought out. وَمِنْهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ And to it you shall be entombed. Your body will disintegrate once again and become a part of the elements of the earth. And that is a destiny for all of those who live. Everything that lives shall live and die. Even you, Ya Fir'aun. Allah says to him, I created you from the earth 
to it you're going to be returned. You're not going to escape me, O Pharaoh. And you will be brought back one more time to be questioned about how you live. And from the earth you will be brought out one more time, a second time to be questioned. Allahu Akbar walillahi alhamd. Pause and reflect on that for a second, my dear brothers, my dear sisters in faith. I want you to consider that the relationship you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is built on a surety of facts that are found in the Quran. And I want you to see the compatibility between what was said by the prophets before Muhammad sallallahu and what is a part of our message. And our cousins, the Jews and, and the Christians who are a part of our greater community, they understand this relationship about Allah and God very similar in many similar ways. There are of course, you know, theological differences about our resurrection and about a return to Allah. And this surah will clearly address the day of judgment. Because Fir'aun, one of the most important things for him to come to terms with, that you don't just live once and become eternal. You will live once and you will be questioned about how you lived before you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a powerful lesson for myself and you, an important life lesson for us to consider. After our break, we will hear the response of Fir'aun. How he rejects the words that were sent to him through the prophets of Allah Musa and Harun alayhi salam. And we will continue to extract life lessons from the Quran, from Surah Taha and the life of Musa alayhi salam. I hope you join me after the short break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah. Peace TV presents What would you have to say about Learning the wise way What would you recommend us to take as career After we pass our school So what exactly we should do What do you have to say about pursuing two fields together Ideas brilliant Strategy sustained The best profession Is a professional person Who invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Avail the opportunity with Dr. Zakir. Depending upon what is your interest. But the main aim should be to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the convincing Islamic come educational formula to excel in your career. Watch Career Guidance every Friday at 6.30 p.m. And repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden. Misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining me again. Alhamdulillah, we've seen the response of Musa that life is a blessing from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asserts in verse number 56 that after Musa spoke all of this, وَلَقَدْ أَرَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا كُلَّهَا فَكَذَّبَ وَأَبَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when we showed Fir'aun all of our signs, he still denied the truth and rejected it. Allahu Akbar. This ayah indicates that it's at that time that Musa didn't just speak to Pharaoh, but he also threw down his stick 
And we see this in other places in the Quran where Pharaoh says, Fa'tina, you say you've come with an ayah, Fa'tina biha, show us this sign that you were given. And Musa threw his stick down, Fa'idha hiya thu'banun azim. It became a massive snake. And Pharaoh turned liman hawlahu and he said to the people around him, Innahu la sahir, he's just a magician. Our magician throws sticks and ropes and makes snakes. He denied that as a sign from Allah. And I want you to pause for a second. The signs that are given to the prophets of Allah were signs that were appropriate to their time and cultural context. That's important. You know, Isa came at a time where healing, curing people was important. So Isa, the miracles that he was given alayhi salam were in tune with the culture of his time. It was about, you know, curing the blind by the power of Allah. The deaf could hear by the power of Allah. The mute could speak by the power of Allah. The one who had died could be brought back to life by the power of Allah. The inanimate bird could be breathed on the clay that was shaped in the shape of a bird and be brought to life by the power of Allah. Isa was given the title Al-Masih, the one who anoints, who passes his hand over the ill and they become well by the order and the power of Allah and their faithfulness in Allah Azza wa Jal. At the time of Musa, what held people's attention and the power that Fir'aun received was that there was within mankind at that era in time and history a fear of magic, a fear of the unnatural, a fear of the hidden and unseen. And the ministers of religion of Pharaoh were magicians. They were the ones who could do things that were out of the ordinary. But they were tricks of illusion. They weren't real. They could not bring nothing to something. All of it is an illusion. It is not real substance. And they know it. The magicians know their job. They know how to distract and hide and change in chemicals and so on. They would put chemicals on their rope that would make the rope move. And they would put the ropes out. They would do certain tricks in the darkness so that you couldn't see it clearly. They would give people intoxicants to get them drunk before they did their tricks. You know, there was all this setup for it. And Fir'aun, he had to find an excuse for what Musa had shown. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَرَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا كُلَّهَا Allah uses the word كُلَّهَا, all of our signs. Now that's a form of, of balagha. It doesn't mean Allah showed him every single sign. What it does mean is Allah showed him enough that Pharaoh recognized in his heart the truth, but rejected it and belied it. What this ayah says is that Fir'aun understood that Musa is from Allah, is from Rabbul Alameen, is from the Lord of all existence. This ayah is proof that Musa has given enough information. And Fir'aun understood it and rationalized it and thought about it enough that he made a decision to lie and belie it and reject it. Fir'aun here becomes extremely accountable to Allah. Previously, he could say, I don't know. What about those who came before? I'm only doing what my father taught. But now, it's been established for him. He's seen the truth. He's recognized it and now is accountable. It's important for us to talk about the word kufr and shirk. Because this is a moment where now Fir'aun performs kufr and calls others to have shirk. Kufr is of two levels. Shirk is of two levels. There is a major kufr and there's a minor kufr. Kufr means to rebel and disbelieve in God. There is that major kufr, which is someone knows God and chooses to bury that truth that they have in their heart deep so that they pretend they don't know the truth. They know Allah, but choose to bury that reality away and become renegades against God. They know Allah, but reject Him. There is a minor kufr where a person believes in God, 
but that's the actions of those who don't believe in Allah and those are minor elements of kufr. A person still has a foundation that they can recover from it. And you know, similar to that is where the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Al-Ahdu الذي بيننا وبينهم The separation between us, those who believe in God and those who don't, is salah. فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَكَدْ كَفَرْ The one who leaves our prayer has entered and can enter into disbelief. It doesn't mean that they don't believe in Allah. There are many Muslims, may Allah protect you from this, who due to laziness or due to whatever reason, didn't pray. They are unbelievers in the fact that they are doing what those who don't believe in God are doing, not praying. But their heart might have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are chastised not to act like the disbelievers. Shirk is also, you know, a prominent theme in this surah where Musa alayhi salam is battling with Fir'aun who wishes people to share their worship of God with him and to make him, if not the God, to make him a God. A'udhu billah. And shirk once again is of two levels. There is the major shirk which is that someone joins other than God with God. Instead of being servicing and worshipping and honoring to the creator of all that exists, they might share someone with Allah or share something with Allah. They might hold value in something or someone in a way that only should be for Allah. They might love something or someone in a way that only Allah should be completely loved. And it leads them away from the truth. The second level of shirk is something may Allah protect you and I, all of us from it. We all at times may fall into that minor shirk. And the Prophet refers to it as a shirk al-khafi. That minor shirk where although we believe in Allah and we don't worship other than Allah, we might do something that is for Allah, but we incorporate a feeling in it towards others with Allah. And the example the Prophet ﷺ when he said, the thing that I fear most for my ummah, inna akhwa fama akhafu ala ummati, of the things that I fear most for my ummah, for my nation of believers, is a shirk al-khafi, is hidden shirk. They said, what is this minor hidden shirk? He said, an yaqoom al-rajul. It's that a person or an individual will stand up to pray to Allah. فَيُزَيِّنُ صَلَاتَهُ But they will make their prayer more perfect, looking outwardly better. مِنْ أَجْلِ نَظَرِ الْمَرْءِ إِلَيْهِ Because they saw someone watching them. They saw someone watching their salat, so they stand better. They pretend to pray better. They didn't do it because of Allah. They prayed, they're praying to Allah, but they make their salat better because someone is watching them. Examples of this, you know, someone visits your home, it's Maghrib prayer. You all your life when you're praying on your own, you haven't gone to the masjid. When you're at home and you're praying your Maghrib, you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, 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 Allah, Wa Allah, Samad. You know, you're hurried, you're quick, you don't pay attention. But all of a sudden, just one person, one brother, stands next to you in your house. That man isn't going to give you money at the end of it. He's not going to, you know, nothing. And all of a sudden, it's like, MashaAllah, Sheikh Sudais is in your home. All of a sudden, Alif Mim. And who did you do that for? All your life, you're doing, you know, Inna Atayna Kal Kawthar. But that one person changed your salah. May Allah protect us from this, Ya Rabb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We showed Fir'aun all of the signs that was necessary for him to come to faith. He understood who I am. He understood Allah. He heard the words that were shared to him by Musa alayhi salam. He came to understand that he is a created being, that he will live and he will die, and that the power and success that he has were not his own doing. But he recanted and he rebelled and he belied and he rejected. Abba. Qala, he says, Ajitana. لِتُخْرِجَنَا مِنْ أَرْضِنَا بِسِحْرِكَ يَا مُوسَى Moses, have you come with your magic to remove us out of our land? That's a lie. It's a blatant lie. Musa never said anything about Fir'aun leaving Egypt. Musa never said anything about Fir'aun not being king. Musa never said anything to Fir'aun about wanting to inherit that land from him and kick him out. 
All Musa said was believe in God and send with us Bani Israel. He didn't say we're going to stay here. He said we'll leave you. Allahu Akbar. But such is the heart of the deceiver. That when truth is clear, the only way they can counter it is to make a big lie. And this until today is the methodology of all oppressors. I pray that you join me again for another installment of Life Lessons from the Quran, a study of Surah Taha and the life of Musa alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah.